What is going on guys and welcome back to the crack a pack series today We're opening up a fairly new set of dominaria a lot of awesome stuff in this set Hopefully we pull it to fairy that would be awesome But uh, as always we're gonna look at this from a draft perspective So we'll do the best we can to actually pick what our pack one pick one would be uh, if we were drafting this set uh, I have drafted a little bit of this uh, not tons, but I actually really enjoy this set So I'm hoping that I can give some solid advice to you uh, and if not, then roast me in the comment section. I welcome it. So, uh, our first card here is Syncopate. It's an instant for X and a blue. Counter target spell unless its controller pays X. If the spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into the graveyard. I really like this card. A scalable counter is always kind of welcome in my book. That doesn't mean it's necessarily a first pick, but if I was in a blue controlly style deck, uh, Syncopate is exactly the kind of card that I would want. Uh, exiling the spell is also really really nice though it probably won't have too much relevance uh, it just is assuring you that it is gone for good uh, and so I do like that uh, Deavenant Trapper I hope I'm saying that correctly 3-2 uh, two for 2 and a white whenever you cast a historic spell tap target creature and opponent controls uh, if you don't know what historic, sp historic spells are they're artifacts uh, legendaries and sagas so sagas are in this set as well uh, in case you have not played with Dominaria, but I actually like this card. Uh, I I really wasn't stoked on this one at first. Uh, I thought that it was a little bit bad, but being able to tap your opponent's stuff down really allows you to go aggressive. Uh, and so if you're in like a, a white aggro style deck, playing something like this where you have a couple maybe cheap artifact equipment, something along those lines, uh, you play one of those and then you tap down their biggest card and all of a sudden you can swing in with your entire board. Uh, really really allows you to be aggressive so I do like that card too up there with syncopate actually I like both of these uh, radiant lightning is an instant for three and a red uh, deals three damage to target player and one damage to each creature that player controls another really good card uh, I think I like this the most out of these cards it's just on the face of it one of the better ones I think uh, three damage to the opponent is great uh, and one damage to every creature that player controls is also great uh, especially if they're loading the board up with a bunch of 1-1s, something along those lines. This card just wipes those all away. Uh, so I really like this card. Very, very powerful. I, 3 damage to target player in particular is a little bit weird. Uh, I, I, that's like the biggest downside to me, and I'm a little bit talking myself out of this card. Uh, but 1 damage to every creature the opponent controls seems pretty good. I might be wrong on that one. Uh, I didn't actually get to play with this card in particular, so we will see. Uh, Soul Salvage is a sorcery for two and a black. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Um, these cards are like fine. As a one of in a draft deck, these are perfectly fine. Uh, being able to pull some creatures back from the graveyard is actually really useful. The fact that this is two creatures makes this much more worth it for three mana. Uh, if it was cheaper and only did one card, I'd probably be still okay with it. But if it was the same price and only one creature, really not worth it. Uh, but for three mana, pulling two creatures back, pretty good. Uh, not first pickable by any means, but definitely not a bad card. Uh, Gift of Growth is an instant for one and a green. It has Kicker uh, for two, so you can play it. Uh, you can add that two in as an additional cost to the card when you cast it. Uh, you end tap target creature, and it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If the spell is kicked, it gets plus four, plus four instead. This is actually just a really solid combat trick. I like that you can kick it, uh, so if it's late game, and you really just don't have anything else to do, just leave this up, and it's great. So I really like this. Uh, not first pick. Usually combat tricks are not good first picks, uh, but I do like that card quite a lot. Uh, Deathbloom Thalid is a 3-2 for 2 and a black. When it dies, create a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token. Uh, and this is kind of why I'm thinking the Radiant Lightning, by the way, might actually be okay, because uh, sapperling tokens are a big deal in this set. There are quite a lot of them. The green-black deck is very, very good. Uh, and this being one of the best three drops in that deck. Uh, I love the ability to leave a creature behind when a creature dies. Uh, hence the afterlife mechanic and the new sets. Uh, but I really like this card. Uh, I don't think it's a first pick by any means, but I do kind of like it more than Radiant Lightning. It forwards your own game plan a lot more. Uh, and so for that reason, I really dig it. Uh, Blink of an Eye is an instant for one and a blue kicker uh, of one and a blue as well. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. If the spell is kicked, you draw a card. This is just good interaction in a blue deck. Uh, no, it's not amazing. It is just a bounce. But if you kick it, you can actually draw a card, replace it, and hopefully draw into something a little bit better. Uh, so I really like this card. Not more than Deathbloom Thalid, just in general. But I do like this card a lot. 
uh, one that I would be really, really interested in if I was already in blue, uh, for sure. So do like it. Run amuck is an instant for one in red. Target attacking creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. Uh, what I like about this card is that for two mana, you're giving plus three, plus three, and trample. So it's probably going to kill something and deal some damage. Uh, they get away with that by saying it has to be an attacking creature, which is kind of nice. This is a really, really good combat trick. Uh, definitely solid. Definitely one I would want in a red deck. I'm not necessarily committed to a red deck, so I wouldn't take this early. But uh, if I was in that situation, then I would definitely want it. Uh, Jousting Lance is an equipment artifact for two mana. Uh, the equipped creature gets plus two plus zero and as long as it's your turn the creature has first strike the equip cost is actually three so in total you're investing five mana to equip it to one creature this is just like an okay spell it's filler it's not amazing but it is historic which has a little bit more upside than normal uh normally cards like this are not like super playable yes you'll play them if you just are really short on uh some playable cards but in this set in particular especially if you're in the historic uh archetype this is actually a really good card. It's not insane, but it's going to give you that historic boost. Maybe uh, it works well with the trapper that we saw earlier in the pack. Uh, and so in that instance, I actually like cards like this. Not as first picks, but in general, they're pretty good. Uh, Sapperling Migration is a sorcery for one and a green. You can kick it also for four extra mana. Create two 1-1 one, one green Sapperling creature tokens. If it was kicked, you create four of them instead. I actually like this much more than Deathbloom Thalid in that same deck, though. Uh, I love the like multiple creatures on one card uh, abilities. These are fantastic. I like that it's scalable. Obviously, ideally, you're going to want to put four of these on the field. Uh, and so you'll probably want to uh, save up for that kicker most of the time. But in a situation or in a pinch where you just need some creatures on the field, you can always pay for two. Uh, and it's a perfectly fine card. I like this quite a lot, so definitely a card I like. Skizix is a 5-3 uh, for 3 and a red. It does have Kicker of 1 red. It has Trample and Haste, and at the beginning of the end step, if it was not kicked, sacrifice it. Uh, so it's a one-shot deal some of the time. Uh, but the Kicker cost is not very high, so a lot of times you might be able to just wait a turn and play this. That being said, in a red deck, Waiting a turn is really not what you want to do, so if this is really your only play, just go ahead and do it, swing in, deal a bunch of damage, and then be done. Uh, yes, y most of the time that's probably going to be the case, I think. Uh, I do like this card, though. In a red aggro deck, I think it's super powerful. I don't like that you have to sacrifice it. It's the classic red issue where it just doesn't have any much long game. Uh, but I also don't like, more importantly, that it only has three toughness, so it's probably going to die in combat anyway. Uh, but... It is still a powerful card. It's one that is probably going to deal one or two points of damage most of the time. Uh, and hopefully clear a creature is really the idea. So I do like this card. Not necessarily more than the migration, to be honest. Uh, but it is a good one. Uh, Zelferin Void is a land. And when it enters the battlefield, you scry one. And it taps for one generic mana. Uh, for some reason, you don't know what scry does. You look at the top card of your library and you can put it either on the top or the bottom. Uh, so you actually get to kind of filter your draws. This is a really good constructed card. Uh, not necessarily amazing in draft, but if you're in a single color or something like that, it's perfectly fine land to play. Even in some two color decks, if you're really skewed towards one, uh, I think you can kind of get away with this. But ideally, you want your land base to be as smooth as possible. Lands that don't generate an actual color, excuse me, uh, are not necessarily the best things to have. Uh, but still, very decent card. Uh, I like it. Our rare is Cabal Stronghold, so you can tap it to add one generic, or you can pay three and tap it to add a swamp for each basic swamp you control. Uh, a black, not a swamp, excuse me. So uh, this is a really like good EDH card. Uh, <laughs> not necessarily a good limited card, not a huge fan of it in limited at all, to be honest. Uh, but it is a powerful card. Being able to tap for a lot of mana off of one land is always good, but you need to net more land than you're actually paying into this. So you have to have at least like four swamps to make this worth it. Uh, and even then it's like breaking even. So like it, it takes a while to set up and limited, not the best. Uh, and then our actual legendary creature, we do get one in every pack is uh, Danitha Capuchin Paragon. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, two, two human knight for two and a white. Knights are actually relevant in this set. That's why I said that. First strike, vigilance and lifelink. Uh, and it, if uh, an aura and equipment spells you cast, cost one less to cast. 
I really like this card. So this is probably going to be the pick for me. Uh, this enables uh, a lot of really, really good things. Uh, any of these like cheap equipments are just way cheaper now. Uh, on top of that, it's just a 2-2 for, uh, for 3, not great, but with First Strike, Vigilance, and Lifelink, that's huge. Uh, so definitely the card I would pick. It is historic as well, so it has a lot of synergy in this set. I think that's definitely going to be the pick for me. I do like Sapperling Migration. I actually like a lot of cards in this set, but uh, she just is awesome. So that's going to be my pick. If you disagree, please let me know in the comment section below. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. If you really enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I am going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next Crack-A-Back video.